In the last section, we learned about Angular's lifecycle hooks. And prior to that section, we talked about some built-in directives in Angular. For example, we learned about ng style, ng class, ng if, ng for, and ng model directive. So all these are built-in directives in Angular. But so far, we have not created a custom user-defined directive yet. And that's what we are going to do in this lecture. In this lecture, you will learn how we can create a custom directive in Angular. But before we create a custom directive, let's first recap what we have learned so far about the directives. So we have learned that we can classify directives into three types, component directive, attribute directive, and structural directive. Component directive is the Angular component, and it is a directive with a template. Then we have attribute directive. Now attribute directive is used to change the appearance or behavior of a DOM element. For example, the ng style and ng class directives are attribute directives. We use these directives to change the appearance or behavior of a DOM element. Then we have structural directive. And structural directive is used to add or remove a DOM element from the web page. For example, we use ng for and ng if directive in order to add or remove elements from the DOM. Basically, this ng4 and ng if directive, they modify the DOM by adding or removing elements from the DOM. So these directives are called as structural directives. Now in this lecture, we are going to learn how to create an attribute directive. And later, we will also learn how we can create a structural directive. So let's go ahead and let's create a custom attribute directive. So here, I have opened the eCard project. In this eCard project, let me open this source folder. From there, let's go to this app folder. In there, let's go to this container folder. And in there, we have this product detail folder. And in that product detail folder, we have our product detail component. So if I go to the HTML file of this product detail component, there you will notice that here we have one div. And inside this div, we are displaying the gender, the brand, and the category of the product. Now, currently we are using a hard-coded value here. So what I will do is I'll copy this line. I'll paste it here. And in here, we want to display the product dot gender. Here, we want to display the brand. So I can say product dot brand. And here, we want to display the category. So we can say product dot category. Okay. All right. Now, when we are displaying this div in the web page, there, for each of these spans, we are setting some background color. So if I go to the web page, and in there, if I open any one of these products, you will notice that there, for each of these spans, we are setting a background color. And we are setting this background color from our CSS class. So if I go to this product detail component.css, there we have this class name. So if I go to product detail component.html, you will see that that div has this class name, eCard product detail GBC. GBC stands for gender, brand, and category. Okay. And inside that div, we have these spans. So for those spans, we have specified the background color and the text color. Now, what I want is instead of setting this background color and this text color here, I will comment it here. And I'll also comment this color here. So I want to set these styles, the background color and the text color by using a directive. And why I want to set the background color and the color using directive is because by using directives, we can dynamically set the value for the background color and the text color. So now if I go to the web page, you will notice that now those pens do not have a background color and their text color is also black. Now let's go ahead and let's create a directive. And when we use that directive on any one of the HTML elements, it should change the background color and the text color. And we should also be able to set a dynamic background color and text color while using this directive. But first, let's go ahead and let's create this directive. So let's go to VS Code. In there, let me first close these folders. And in the F folder, I'm going to create a new folder. I'll call it custom directives. Okay. And inside this custom directives folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'll call this file maybe set background. Okay, and this set background, it is going to be a directive. So the convention is we need to use dot directive and then we can specify the extension and the extension here is going to be 
script.ts because here we are going to create a TypeScript file. Now in here, what we are going to do is we are going to create a directive class and I'm going to call this directive class as set background. Okay. And I'm also going to export this directive class so that it can be used in other files as well. Now here we are simply creating a normal class and these parentheses are not required here. Okay, so here we are simply creating a normal TypeScript class. But in order to make this TypeScript class as a directive class, all we have to do is we have to decorate it with a directive decorator. Okay, now in order to use this add directive decorator, we also need to import this directive from Angular slash co. Okay, so what we have done so far, we have created a class. We have decorated that class with add directive decorator. And in order to use this directive decorator, we need to import it from Angular slash co. Now to this directive decorator, we can pass a metadata object. And in that metadata object, we can set a selector. Now we have learned that we can use a directive like an attribute. So when we used ng class or ng style directive, these directives are attribute directives. So we use them as an attribute. So here, the selector of this directive also, we want to use it as an attribute. So within the single quotes, we can specify the selector here. For the selector, I will call it as set background. You can call this selector anything. Now, since we want to use this selector like an attribute, we need to wrap it within square brackets. So earlier in this course, we learned about different types of selector. And one of the selector is the attribute selector. And in order to make a selector an attribute selector, we wrap the value of that selector within square brackets like this. Now, if we go ahead and if we try to use this selector on any HTML element, let's say I'll go ahead and I'll try to use this selector on this span element like this. Let's also use it on these two span elements. If I save the changes and if I go to the web page and if I try to open any of the products, nothing has happened here. So the background color has not changed yet because we have not written any logic for that. So now let's go to this set background directive in this class. Let's go ahead and let's specify a constructor. So we have learned that whenever a component or a directive is initialized, first of all, its constructor is called. Right. Now, when we are using the selector of this directive class on these HTML elements, basically what will happen is Angular will inject a reference of that element to this component class. Now, how it is going to inject that reference using dependency injection. So basically here in the constructor, we can specify a parameter. Let's say I'm going to call it as element and it is going to be of type element ref. Again, in order to use this element ref, we need to import it from Angular slash co. So here, when we are using this set background selector on this span element, what will happen is an instance of this set background class will be created. Now, in order to create the instance, its constructor will be called, right? And when this constructor will be called on whichever element we have used the selector of that directive, a reference of that element that will be injected and it will be assigned to this element parameter. And this is called as dependency injection. Now we will talk about dependency injection in great detail in our coming lectures. But here just understand that here Angular is injecting an instance of a dependency inside this set background class. And this dependency injection is happening using this constructor. So basically on whichever HTML element we are going to use this selector, a reference of that HTML element we are going to get for this parameter. In this case, when we are using this selector on the first pen, first of all, an instance of set background class will be created. And in order to create that instance, the constructor of the set background class will be called. At that time, a reference of this pen element will be passed to the element parameter of that constructor. Then when we are using this set background color for the second time, again, an instance will be created. Now, in order to create that instance, again, the constructor of the set background class will be called. Now, this time when the constructor of the set background class will be called, this time the reference of this span element will be passed and it will be assigned to this element parameter. 
in the same way we are also using it for the third time so one more instance the third instance of set background class will be created and in order to create an instance of that class this constructor will be called and when this constructor will be called a reference of this span element will be passed and it will be assigned to this element parameter so this element parameter it is going to stay a reference of that html element or component on which we have used this selector now once we have a reference of that html element on that html element so this element parameter it is going to store that html element and since it is of type element ref it is going to have a native element property so this native element is basically going to store that html element and on that element we want to set style and we want to set the background color let's say to red okay so now if we save the changes and if we go to the web page let's refresh the page let's open a product you will see that that style has not been applied yet now why is that that's because we have created this directive this set background directive but angular does not know about this directive yet so we need to inform angular about this new directive which we have created for that we need to register this directive in the app module so let's go ahead and let's open app module class in there in this declaration section we also need to declare this set background now in order to use this set background what we need to do is we need to import it and for import we need to specify its path so for the path from the current directory we need to go to this custom directives folder and in there we have our set background dot directive all right with this if we save the changes if we go to the web page and if i open a product now you will notice that the background color has changed to red if i go back and let me close this app module.ts file here and if i change it to yellow now if you go to the web page and if you open a product let me open this first product this time you will see that the background color has changed to yellow okay in the same way if we also want to set the text color so again we can say element dot native element dot style dot color and let's say we want to set it to white if you go to the web page and if you open a product let me open this product this time you will see that the text color is changed to white now here i don't want this yellow as the background color instead i want something grayish so here i'll use this color this hexadecimal value if we save the changes and now if we go to the web page and if i open any one of these products so this is how it will look now okay and we can use this selector on any html element so currently we are using it on these three spans now what i will do is i'll also go ahead and i'll use it on this div so basically this div here it is displaying this part okay so if i go back and if i use this selector on that div so now a reference of this div this will be assigned to this element parameter and on that we are setting its background color and its text color so now if we go to the web page and let me reload the page and now if i open any one of these products you will see that there also the background color has changed to gray okay so in this way we have created our very first custom directive which we are using to change the background color of an html element or a component now let me go back to vs code and i'll remove this selector from this div i don't want it here now currently what we are doing is we are writing the logic here inside the constructor but this is not the right place to write this logic that's because in the angular's lifecycle hook section we learned that the constructor of a component or a directive is called in order to create the instance of that component or that directive but by the time the constructor gets called its properties are not initialized yet 
So instead of writing this logic inside this constructor, we can use ng on init lifecycle hook because we have learned that this ng on init lifecycle hook it gets called after all the component properties are fully initialized. Right. So I'm going to write this logic inside this ng on init lifecycle hook. So I'll cut it from here. I'll paste it here. All right. And also in order to use this ng on init lifecycle hook, I'm going to implement it from on init interface. And in order to use this on init interface, we need to import it from angular slash co. All right. Now inside this ng on init, we will not have access to this element parameter because this element parameter, it is local to this constructor. So we cannot access it inside this ng on init. For that, what I can do is I can create a private property. I'll call it element. Okay. It is going to be of type element ref. So we can also specify the type here. And inside this constructor, I'll simply say this dot element equals element. Okay. So we are assigning this element property of this set background class with the value which we are receiving for the element parameter in the constructor. And now here we can simply use that element property. So we can say this dot element. Let's do the same thing here. Okay. So this element property, which we have here, which we have created here, it is storing that same reference on which we have used this selector. And with this also, it should be working as expected. So if we go to the web page, and when I open any one of these products, it is still working. But now instead of writing the logic inside the constructor, we are writing it inside the ng on init method. Now TypeScript also provides us a shortcut way to create a private property. So here we are creating a private property, right? This element is a private property and we are assigning a value to this private property from the value which we are receiving inside the constructor. So instead of writing it like this, what we can do is I can simply comment it here and I can specify an access modifier for this element parameter itself. So when I say private here and then specify the parameter name, what TypeScript will do is behind the scenes, it will create a private property called element and it will assign that private property with the value which we are going to receive for this element parameter. And when we are doing it like this, we don't need to write this line of code and we also don't need this line of code. Okay, because only this line of code, what it will do is behind the scenes, it will create a private element property like we were doing earlier and it will be done automatically by TypeScript. We don't have to explicitly write it and it will also assign that private property with the value stored in the element parameter like we were doing here. So these two lines of code, we have combined it into this single line of code. And if you go to the web page, our application should still be working. So if I open any one of these products, you will see that the directive is still working. The background color is still changed and the text color is still white. All right. So in this lecture, we learned how to create a simple custom directive. Now we are going to modify this directive a little bit more and make it more dynamic in our coming lectures. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.